So the reason why this review is going to be a bit late is mainly because I was celebrating the Passover last week. And so while I was able to do the community poll stand poll for the latest chapter of King and Omega, I wasn't able to actually sit down and record the review. However, it seems as though for this entire week, Daro has taken a break which good for him this man has not taken i don't even remember the last time daro has taken a break and so there is no chapter coming out this week for king and omega and so i wanted to change up the review format at least to test out the waters breaking it down the chapter point by point and if you like that hey make sure to like and sub and comment down that you would like this type of review format so without further ado let's go on to the actual chapter which is named Otekamaru. The chapter starts off right where we left off actually in the last chapter with Ryan, William and Sean facing off against each other about to fight with Ryan saying slick your thirst Otekamaru and that both William and Sean are going to be appetizers for him probably alluding to Gilbert being the main dish. But as Ryan draws his sword, William notices that while Ryan is, is actually dual wielding the Nodachi Katana and if you don't know what a Nodachi Katana is, well, I'm not too sure either but it is basically a bigger version of the Katana where you're genuinely supposed to use both hands when you're going to use it, kind of like a buster sword only a lot slimmer. And so William being surprised that Ryan is, is actually using one hand hand to hold the nodachi is fairly odd because he has to be fairly strong to be able to do that which might be hinting towards what Ryan's training might have been but we'll eventually get to that. But because of this they are a bit cautious of Ryan as they try to approach him and this is where Sean starts advising William and this genuinely shows that Sean despite the fact that he well later on died in the chapter was someone who was trying to play this smart. He wasn't your typical henchman that would blindly run in to fight someone. He is taking a lot of things into consideration. The fact that Ryan is basically the strongest the Kure clan has and that will he advised William to basically proceed with caution against Ryan in this moment. And the funny part of this is that William actually makes a joke that even his henchmen at this point are giving him orders which is actually kind of funny. And as they're approaching Ryan slowly we get to see Ryan almost get hyped up before we actually go into the flashback which was pretty interesting because this does give us the the answer as to where he got this katana and why it's important in the first place. And the flashback is surprisingly to the death of Kure Uryo. Now it seems as though before his last words to Oma and all of them that we got to see in the chapter during the end of Kengen vs Perjito, he actually said a bit more to Ryan specifically. And that is if he needed more strength there was a place in the mountains where he could actually go to train to seek greater strength. And this actually gives us context as to where Kure Ryan actually was this entire time in the mountains of Tohoku and that when he was training he was specifically training with Otekamaru. Now this is where I'm going to make a few speculations as to what this training might have actually ended up being as I do not think that Kure Ryan will all of a sudden turn into a swordsman. I think Otekamaru is simply the means by which he will achieve the next level of power. And that is the fact that I think Otekamaru is meant to be an incredibly heavy blade that once the person actually manages to master how to wield the blade, this might actually improve all of their stats in general in terms of movement. We know this is an actual concept mainly because of chapter 250 and what Wu Long showed that sim simply changing how you do your techniques and optimizing your movement 
can lead to way better results and I think Otekamaru, basically this bewitched blade, is actually the means to which this will happen. Because we don't actually get to see or hear what Kure Ryan actually says because the last words when describing Otekamaru is this, a bewitched sword that has gone on blood for a thousand years. Master Otekamaru, Ryan. Then you will be. So what will Ryan become once he has mastered this blade? We'll see. But the fight actually begins at this moment and they begin to clash with Ryan smacking William with the sheath of the Nodachi while Sean is actually trying to creep up on him. However, he completely fails in doing this and gets hit by Ryan as well and it seems as though they can't really close in on Ryan. Despite the fact that he's carrying a heavy blade, he's able to effectively counter attack. And while he strikes Sean again with the sheath of his blade, he actually manages to break Sean's right arm and that is some pretty impressive strength on Ryan's part. But unfortunately because he had focused on Sean for way too long, William then gets the opportunity to get a bit closer forcing Ryan to dodge forward. But unfortunately that also leaves him open to Sean kicking him basically at around his shoulders since he had tilted over. Which creates some distance between Ryan and Sean for a bit but also Sean and his blade as he had actually lost it when Ryan had broken his right arm which he was carrying the knife on. And while William is engaging Ryan, Sean is looking for the perfect opportunity to finally get the blade and he chooses the moment at which Ryan is looking away. And unfortunately for Sean, even though he picks the right moment, it seems as though he made a miscalculation or wasn't actually watching close enough because before he knows it, while he's grabbing his knife with one of his his left hand, Ryan's Odachi, the blade itself, manages to come around and slice off the top part of his skull. And just like that, my man, Sean is dead. In around 11 pages, my man is gone. However, we move on very quickly from that moment and Ryan uses the momentum that he had used to cut Sean to also attack William who was in front of him. However, when William blocks, he actually manages to actually also push back on Ryan's attack. Which is actually a lot more impressive when you think about it. Because even Ryan actually starts talking about how jacked William actually is. And William of course responds with a bit of anger since of course Ryan had killed Sean. But also we get the revelation of why he's seemingly so powerful. And by powerful we I mean physically powerful. As William Wu is confirmed to have superhuman syndrome. And here we seem to get the narration that says innate physical strength afforded by superhuman syndrome combined with the latent power unleashed by Guhan as he unleashes Guhan at 100%. Now that is terrifying to think about. And we did know that William was special even by the Westwood faction standards. But this is insane to be completely honest. I know some people have actually complained about this but we did know that there was something crazy going on with William for a long time. Personally I thought he was going to be incredibly powerful, at least I thought that he was the one who beat Ryan the first time but this is also fairly scary in terms of William's potential because he has very 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 good specs with this. The amount of power that he's probably able to output could probably rival Julius and Waka, at least on paper. We're not sure yet. 
but that is insane and actually explains how he was able to parry the Odachi which seems to be a blade that is a lot heavier than it seems. But after that revelation they clash once again with Kurei Ryan going in with both the blade and the sheath of the Odachi. And the same thing happens again, William manages to basically block that attack and parry it for the most part, which straight up breaking the sheath of the Nodachi. It is at this point that of course William discloses that he had actually recently achieved 100% of the Guhan release and that he probably, at least in this state, has the strongest muscles around. Some Wakatsuki fans are probably screaming at the top of their lungs when they read that, but I think my boy Waka's gonna be fine, guys. Like, I don't even know if William's gonna survive this, but even if he does, Wakatsuki's probably gonna have a lot more in his bag or improve on his actual power by the time we see him fight again. So for anyone who's worried about Waka, and him being special, I don't think it's a big deal, honestly. But of course, William is hyping himself up, saying like, oh yeah, he isn't the same as the other Westwood faction fodders that he had actually faced in the past, and proceeds to attack Ryan all over again. And this time is unleashing a barrage of attacks against him. And it seems as though Ryan isn't really coping well with the speed at which William is actually coming at him. And it is at this point in the fight that William basically surmises that yeah, Ryan isn't really a weapons type of guy or his swordsmanship is really not good. Again, kind of hinting to what I've said earlier, Ryan is probably not going to turn into a swordsman. I think the sword is just a means to an end for him. But William does note that he probably has better weapon skill than Ryan and that because of that and his strength buff, he probably has the upper hand at this point and manages to basically grab the blade using his axe and throw it out of Ryan's hands to the side and then he uses the other axe to actually attack Ryan directly and this is where most people would be like it's game over but of course this is Kure Ryan no one's expecting that and he manages to dodge swiftly and land a punch basically in the gut which is pretty bad with him laughing and saying, sorry Otekamaru, feeding time's gonna have to wait. With William contemplating the question of, did Ryan actually let go of his blade on purpose? Which ends off the chapter. Now, I'm, I know a lot of people are gonna be confused because that's the end of the chapter, but Komiki did misorder the chapters or the, some of the pages for this chapter. So that's why it might seem a bit odd that I actually missed a few pages. But yeah, that is the chapter. Pretty good from the Ryan side. And this conflict is pretty juicy honestly, but probably won't be lasting more than maybe let's say two chapters at most. Most people and even I'm on this train, I'm expecting this to last at least one more chapter, barring anyone else interfering with what's happening here. Now whether or not William survives this, honestly I hope he does because I kind of like William to be honest, so even if he gets his ass handed to him by Ryan, I at least want him to survive. But yeah, that's the video review and breakdown. Don't forget to like and sub if you've made it this far and until next time, take care.